What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of 68 Shining Moments. Today, we have Vermont legends TJ Sorrentine and Tom Brennan talking about that shot presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. All right, welcome back to another edition of 68 Shining Moments. Now, my name is Rob Doster. I am joined today uh, by the two most memorable characters from Vermont's upset of Syracuse in 2005, TJ Sorrentine and Coach Tom Brennan. What is going on, gentlemen? How are we doing? Wonderful for me to be here, especially with my boy. This is a this is a great afternoon, man. Just making my day. Yeah, appreciate you having us, Rob. It's uh, it'll be fun. Looking forward to it. So I asked this up front to all of our guests on this series. Um, you guys are now a part of March Madness lore. You know, hit that from the parking lot is something that's always going to be synonymous with the NCAA tournament and with March and with this time of year. So uh, I'm just kind of curious, like, what is it? like knowing that that's something that that you did that every time you turn on an ncaa tournament game or you watch something in march you're going to see that highlight eventually like how how is that tj why don't you start yeah it's it, you know it's funny it's funny rob because i knew we were doing this today and this morning i woke up i had an email from a, a brown alum and he said I, I just wanted to let you know on the northwestern illinois game last night au hit a shot from the parking lot and they, <laughs> they shouted you out um and it's just something that never goes away. And uh, trust me, it, it brings me back to great memories and uh, very, very fortunate, um, you know, to have played for a guy that let me shoot, shoot shots like that. <laughs> you know, if I may add, Rob, you know what we have, what I haven't done in a long, long time, and I really am happy to have this opportunity to do it. And that is to say how great that kid was how great a player he was for us for four years. Uh, 2,000 points led us and everything. And, uh, you know, and he got, uh, you know, got a little bit lost in his shuffle when the big blondie came in. And <laughs> and so th then it was still the two of them. But, you know, Copperrath being a hometown boy and all that. And then – but with TJ making that shot – uh, that kind of put him on an island about, you know, well, look at the shot he made. But he made those shots all the time. Now, he didn't make them from that quite that far. But, uh, you know, he made 11 threes in a game. 11. I mean, took your breath away when you were on the bench. I mean, just amazing. So, so he, it wasn't like he was just some kid who was firing it. He was a great player, had a great career. And, uh, and it, was it a little deep for me? Yes. But... <laughs> But that being said, all's well that ends well. And uh, and and I, I always kid. And the only reason I kid about it is because he was so mentally tough and he was so physically tough because he wasn't having a great game. I mean, he just wasn't having a, a great shooting game, you know? And that happens to shooters once in a while. But he did all the other things. And, and when it came time, there was never a doubt in my mind that that he would take it. And And more importantly, there was never a doubt in his mind. The big thing, though. Uh, so yeah, I was I shocked a little bit, but uh, he he had earned the right. He certainly had earned the right. I mean, he knew what he was feeling, not me, and uh, and it was beautiful. And it was and it is so neat, you know, just like a neat way for him. And then we we forget the next night he went out and had thirty against Michigan State. It was unbelievable. We played lights out. He was amazing. And so uh, yeah, I, I yeah he hit it from the parking lot, and that's going to be around forever. But let's understand, man, that cat was a great player from the jump. Well, TJ, TB just mentioned that, you know, you didn't shoot all that well. So I got to ask you a question. Do you feel bad about sealing uh, Jermaine Mopajila's thunder? I mean, he was <laughs> 9 for 10 from the floor. He had 20 and 9, 5 assists, 4 assists. He played the game of his life, and no one remembers it on a night that you were 5 for 20 from the field. Do, do, yeah, does, yeah. That, does that bring you guilt? Do you feel bad about that at all? Yeah, not 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 one bit. Not one bit. Oh, <laughs> boy. I uh, – you know, I thank Jermaine, uh, you know, every time I talk to him, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I let him know you, you really were the man in that game. You, you were the man, you know, and I think that's enough for him, you know, knowing him, that's, that's who he is. And, um, you know, it's uh, very fortunate. I mean, it was a low scoring game. I mean, no one could, could, mm -hmm. could score. And, um, you know, we were fortunate, you know, to score that few points and be in the game against a caliber team like Syracuse. All right. So I just want to rewind a little bit before we talk about that specific game, we've kind of become accustomed to, Vermont, like being a powerhouse in the America East and being one of the best mid-major programs in the country. But at that point, you, you hadn't really quite broken through to that level. You made a couple of NCAA tournaments, but uh, I think it was in 2003, you played Arizona that had 
uh, like Will Bynum and Iguodala and Channing Fry and all those guys. Uh, the next year in the first round, you played UConn that went out to win the national title. So you had just kind of been like a team that had been in the tournament. Maybe people recognized you. Um, you draw Syracuse, right, in 2005. You're a 13 seed. You have, like Coach mentioned, uh, Taylor Copper, and TJ Sword, two 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 thousand point scores on the roster. Like, are you thinking, okay, that's a good draw, we can win this game? Like, what's what's the thought process when you see that bracket come out? TV, why don't you start? Well, Rob, the first thing was I was not crazy about the idea that we were playing Syracuse because, you know, they were literally right across the street and they we weren't going to sneak up on them. I was, you know, I wish we'd played somebody from out west or you know the Midwest, Big Twelve, but. You know that that was not going to happen, and uh, so once once it came out that it was them, uh, then you know we just tried to make the best of it. And I think one a, an interesting little backstory is uh, Jerry Tarkanian called me up and he went, "Tommy Shark, <laughs> Tark." I said, "Yeah, I thought it was somebody playing with me." You know, so really, he said, "Come on, I'm going to tell you." I can beat that zone. I know how to beat that zone. I know how to beat it. And he went on like 15 minutes, uh, you know, get the guy on a high post, short corner, you know, what, what you got to do to beat it. But he was so confident uh, that we were going to be able to score. And he said he had watched this. I don't know whether he did or not, but I was, I was so pumped from that conversation in and of itself. I thought, damn, how about this? Old Tark thinks we got a shot here. So I, uh, that was a great backstory to it. And it, and it certainly helped boost my confidence. TJ, what did you think when you saw the bracket come out? I mean, that's Jerry McNamara, TJ Sorrentine. You guys are kind of, you know, kind of the same player. Yeah, well, I, I love the matchup just because I knew I was going to be able to fire some threes up. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I was probably, I was the most excited out of everybody. I think a lot of people thought it was a bad draw because they just had won the Big East Championship. And um, obviously they had some great players. And But for me, I was like, oh, man, this is great. This is like right up my alley. I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to make 10 threes, you know, um, not knowing I'd start the game 0 for 6 from three. But... <laughs> so what people don't really remember about that game is, is your shot actually came in overtime and it didn't really click for me until I went back and I watched it again today. And I always seem to forget that fact um, at the end of regulation, uh, Jermaine, uh, he drove baseline, right, stepped out of bounds and made a layup like so. Take me through kind of what happened in that moment. Did you see him step on the line? Were, were you angry about the call? Did you think TB was going to get teed up, TJ? Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think I think everybody was 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 angry about that call. Um, but you know, you look on the replay, he clearly stepped out. But you no, know, I'm being on the floor. I'm like, it's it. It's over. You know, like yeah. we got the bucket. Um, and then you hear the whistle. Um, yeah, just shock. You know, just kind of like jubilation to oh, man. Are you serious? And I think going into overtime, that huddle, like I give coach a ton of credit, like most people and most teams who are the underdog go into that huddle and you're like, man, we missed our shot. You know, normally you don't win that game. And, you know, coach, he, he wouldn't allow us to feel that way. And, you know, you know, like, like he always did. We got this, we got this voice. This, <laughs> right where we, we got him right where we want him. Right where we want him. <laughs> so. uh, thank God, no truth serum. <laughs> because i was shattered <laughs> and i just thought damn we have worked so hard this group deserves this man how could this happen hey we're we're right where we want to be what would we rather do than play these guys five more minutes nothing in the world so let's and, and, and we did it and to their credit god love them they did not get shook not for a minute and we played we played well in the overtime. We really played well. And uh, uh, and as, as TJ said, that was the time when, you know, okay, we could have just packed it up, said we played great. We did we did everything. This program has could not have done any more. We almost got Syracuse, but they didn't do that. They stayed the course, and, and, we're, and that was the thing too, Rob. We were good. I mean, that's what – I don't know if people understand that enough. We were a really good team. So, I, I mean, obviously I was a little shook when we got to overtime, truth be told, but – uh, I didn't. I didn't doubt for a minute that we could do it. I, I'd have rather not have had to. But <laughs> once we were there, we had a play, and we had players. So God love them, and we had tough guys too. Guys that were really committed and hard nosed. So that part of it didn't scare me. I, I just w wish that I was having a should have been having a cocktail by then, not drawing up a play for him to take a thirty footer. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. So let's 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 talk about that because you you didn't draw up a play from what. If I recall correctly, you, you called something and TJ right. looks at the bench and just says, nah. Yeah. And you know this. what it was? And and it was funny because our assistant 
put it in. Our, our, our assistants put the play in. It was called red. I didn't even know what the hell it was. Right. I, I mean, I kind of knew what it was, but, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, that, by that time I, I, that wasn't my area, you know? And so, so anyway, I said, I hollered out to him because my assistant said to me, uh, run red, run red. Okay, fine. So I, I, I hollered out to him, yo, run red, run red. And he turned Rob, honest to God, you can see it in the film, turned and kind of put his, <laughs> put his hand out. And he said, I got it. I got it. And I thought, well, that's an interesting answer. <laughs> and then he turned around and fired. It was like, are you, what? And Copperrath was so great because Copperrath said, I was under the basket when he shot it. And I thought, what the hell is he doing? And then I was following the flight of the ball and I knew it was going in. <laughs> and then damn if it didn't go in. <laughs> and that And that changed the world as far as Vermont sees it. We'll get back to that interview in a minute, but first, let me tell you about our partners over at DraftKings Sportsbook. With March Madness beating down our door, DraftKings is the best way for you to get a little action in on the game. If you have not downloaded the DraftKings Sportsbook app yet, well, what are you waiting for? It's the safest, it's the most secure, it's the most reliable, and it allows you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience and this week they are offering field of 68 listeners a pretty sweet deal if you sign up now with the promo code field 68 you can turn one dollar into one hundred dollars if one of the main event fighters in ufc 159 this weekend lands a single punch that's it one punch to turn one dollar into one hundred dollars and don't worry, if MMA is not really your thing, DraftKings Sportsbook offers odds and promos on basketball, on hockey, on really whatever sport you're watching. They got it. They got odds. They got specials. They got whatever you want. But since they're basically giving away $100, you might as well sign up now. Watch a little UFC and remember to use the promo code FIELD68. That's FIELD68. You must be 21 years or older. Offer available for a limited time only. Eligibility restrictions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. TJ, just take me through what's going through your head in that moment, if you can remember back to then. And, and also, I'm kind of curious. You, you are a coach now. So if, you, if you're in that situation, you're up by one, a minute left, in overtime, NCAA tournament, upset on the line, your point guard looks at you, waves you off, and shoots a 30-footer. Like, what, what are you doing in that moment as a coach now? Yeah, in that moment, I'm doing the same thing Coach did. And uh, if you you can see it on the film, you know, he's standing up and then he goes and sits down and he says it He says it best. I, I knew what he was going to do. I was just rooting for it to go in at that point. So that, that, that's what I would do. I would do the same exact thing. I, you know, put so much confidence in me and, um, oh, you know, uh, you know, I'd put the work in. It's, it's, it's one of those moments, you know, storybook as far as, you know, I'm in my yard when I'm 10 and 12 years old, shoot three, two, one, you know, shooting those, you know, uh, just imagining and waiting uh, that someday you could be in that moment. And um, fortunately, I was in that moment. Um, I really didn't know how far out I was um, with the ball. But I was going to say, Rob, he created the moment, you might say. <laughs> My biggest thing was I didn't want the top two zone defenders to get close enough where I had to pass it. So I kind of just was dribbling out there. And as they started to come towards me, I said, it's now or never. And uh, <laughs> the rest is history. So. so do you take credit for, I mean, we see Damian Lillard shooting 37 footers for, for game winners and, you know, Steph Curry hitting these bombs. Do you think that they owe you credit for being the guy that, that, that started this trend? You know, do you, do you need to do you need to put your name out there? Yeah, look, I did it first. This TJ Sorrentine. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't. I don't know. Definitely not. I'm not in that category. <laughs> but I will. You know, anytime anybody says he shot it from the parking lot, like I, I always, I always feel something special because of Gus Johnson. So Gus Johnson should should take credit for the parking lot analogies. Um, and whenever I hear it, it, it you know, it tingles in my stomach. So that that's a good thing. That's enough for me. When was the first time that you guys actually heard that call? Because that, that's become synonymous with the shot, right? It's the call, it's the shot, it's the moment, it's everything. But when was the first time you heard it? Did, did you go back and, like, watch it on the film? In those days when you were watching film, do you get the sound? Is it the broadcast? Like, when, when did you finally I hear can't, it? You know, you know what, Rob? I can't. Uh, TJ will know better. I cannot remember exactly the first time I saw it. Uh, but I do, I do feel, I honest to God feel, now – not Vin Scully, not Red Barber, not Chick Hearn necessarily yet, 
But this guy is going to go down as one of the all-time great announcers. Now, some people say he's a little loud. Some people say, well, you know, whatever. But he has risen to the point where he is going to go down as one of the all-time great basketball announcers ever. And that will go into his all-time famous calls. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, for me, Rob, it was like one of those uh... – I never even wanted to watch it, you know, for, you know, for the first couple of years, I, I never re really watched it, you know, when it would come on and my parents would play it or, you know, once during the moment, um, I, I, I just, I had no interest, you know, I just, uh, and it took me a couple of years later and then I finally pulled it up on YouTube and watched that two minute and 30 second clip. And yeah, man, really cool. It was cool stuff. Like I can't <laughs> lie. It was, uh, it was, it was really cool. So, so I'm always curious about this too. Um, after you pull off that upset, you guys are celebrating, right? This huge win, historic win for uh, the University of Vermont, for the University of Vermont, historic win for the program, something that's always going to be memorable. And you got to turn around in 48 hours and play Michigan State. So how long are you, are you celebrating that? Is it like, okay, we're going to celebrate in the locker room, but as soon as we leave, it's on to the next. Like, how does, how does that work, TB? How did that work for you? Well, for me, celebration was a, a, a big part of it. Big, big, big part of it. Matter of fact, my wife and I would go up to the room, uh, and then every time uh, – back then, they used to do Sports Center every hour. Do 11, 12, 1. Every time it came on, we went back down in the bar, <laughs> watched it, and then get, went back up to the room. Uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, it, it, was just, it was just unbelievable. And uh, sadly, you know, and, and my boy has always given me hell about this, uh, you were satisfied. <laughs> and I, I got to say, damn straight I was satisfied because I knew that either we beat Michigan State and we go play Duke in Austin or we lose to Michigan State and we go home and have a parade in Burlington, you know, I mean, that's win-win to me, you know, especially my career was over. Uh, obviously I, I want to go as far as we could go. And, uh, and then the next night we played a team that went to the final four, it was great. And TJ by himself kept us in the game. We almost beat him. He had 30 or 28 or something like that. And he was great. He was so great. And, uh, but we just didn't have enough and we ran out of gas. And I have to say when it was over, I didn't break down and cry. I just thought you had a tremendous run. You got a great win the other night. You lost in a great game today. You know, uh, be thankful and grateful for what you have. And, uh, yeah, we would have loved to won one more, and he almost did it. But, uh, really, when you look back on it, we we got enough. We did. We had enough. Yeah, that night, I mean, after the game was just, you know, obviously hectic and crazy. And when we finally got back to the room – you know, back then it was uh, like cell phones had just come come about. Like I had just got my first cell phone uh, my senior year. So like I go back, you know, it's like I didn't even bring my cell phone to the game, you know, so I, I leave it in the room. So we finally get back and me and Taylor are, are rooming together. And, you know, I look at my phone. I'm like, what? Like unreal messages. And, you know, back then text wasn't as big. So it was a lot of like voicemails. I had like 35 voicemails. So I'm going through the voicemails. I kid you not, Rob, there was 15 to 16 from Syracuse fans, you know, MF and me. <laughs> oh, they got my number. So I'm like playing them on speaker to Taylor, like, Tay, hey, like, listen to these fans. <laughs> like, no clue how they got my number. So to me, that's always something I'll remember. Um, just like random <laughs> Syracuse oh. fans. No. Or how about how about T when on Saturday afternoon uh, we just finished practice and we had this big cop that was with us. He was a good guy, and uh, I I said this team does it deserves the best steak in Worcester. You need to find me the best steak in Worcester. <laughs> and the guy said, Coach, just let me take care of it. Let me handle it. He put us on a bus. We get out on the highway. We're going like ninety miles an hour. We go all the way to Boston to like Abe and Louie's or like the famous, famous steakhouse. Uh, and uh, sure enough, they're waiting right there for us. They got a Vermont menu. It, it was amazing. And we drove, we drove 90 miles an hour, got rid of everybody. Like we were right on char in charge and went to downtown Boston and ate uh, the, as good a steak as you could get. And I thought, there you go. That's a, that's a nice way to spend your Saturday. <laughs> Living the good life. Huh? All right. So uh, I'll leave you guys with this TJ. I, 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 th I want people to understand what this shot meant to, to, to the people of the state of Vermont and the fans of that program. And I think the best way to do it is to, is to kind of let you tell the story of what happened after your wedding at, at a little local bar called uh, TK's, which I think is technically in Williston. I don't think it's in Burlington, but Winooski, 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 the onion city. 
Yeah. <laughs> can you can you just take me through what happened that night um, uh, at your wedding at that bar? I, I, I'm guessing it was after a few uh, beverages had been consumed. Yeah. So yeah, good good story, Rob. So it was uh, it was actually the night before my wedding. We had the rehearsal dinner, and then the plan was to go down to CK's, which was a bar in Winooski, which a friend of mine owned, and um, I actually bartended at. Um, it actually wasn't CK's at the time, but my senior year after we had finished, you know, went down there and served a few cocktails to make some extra money. And um, so I had a great relationship with a lot of people throughout the town. And uh, but so getting back to the wedding night before the wedding, we went to that CK's afterwards and that was the plan. The place was packed and, uh, you know, a bunch of friends I had, haven't seen in a while. And, um, you know, the DJ, he, uh, he, he puts Gus Johnson's call on and, um, the place goes wild. Like it was nuts. Like it was, you know, pe- you know, people jump in and we all circled up. My parents were there and, um, it, it was, uh, you know, just one of those to speak to your point, like, brings you back to how much it meant to so many people um, because it was, you know, you know, eight years later or whatever it was. And um, it still impacted um, the community and the people. And it's just a special place to be, you know, and um, just the success that they've, they continue to have um, is, you know, I think keeps it going, you know? Um, So a lot of credit to those guys and those coaches and players. And, uh, but yeah, man, it's a, you never know what you're going to get when you get go back there and uh, the boys get back together. So it's always. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been to you know, see all the times. That's we a, have to say real quickly, we have to say uh, we, we need to be honest. It wasn't a special place at all uh, before he got there. It wasn't, it wasn't a special place when I got there. Okay. I'll tell you that. Cause I was there 15 years before he got there. Uh, but it, it was a very special place because we built up a lot of emotional equity. Uh, and when that team got good, uh, that that community absolutely fell in love with them, and headed by, of course, him and and Copperath. But but it's not like, oh yeah, we've been good a long time, and you know now this is just kind of what tends to follow. We hadn't been good in a hundred years. We had wonderful kids. We played our butts off. We 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 got better. We got close. But when he came, when he came, uh, and Taylor and Hain and and uh, Mopajila, that's when that's when it became a very special place. And as to TJ has said, it's been an extremely special place ever since. Yeah. Well, when you first said it wasn't a special place, I thought you were talking about CKs and I was like, yeah, I've been there. That's that, <laughs> Yo, that no, was, that was never a special place either, except for that <laughs> night. <laughs> oh man. Well, listen guys, I appreciate the time. This has been so much fun. Um, and I will, uh, I'll look forward to chatting with you in, in the future. And I'll make sure that when this does go live, when we publish, I will make sure you guys get it. So thank you so much for the time. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it, brother. All right, my boy. Our pleasure. Thank you so much for having us.